In this lesson, we're going to look at using lists. So we briefly touched on using lists during, lists during our data type session, but it doesn't mean anything until you start putting it in action. Now I want to take this in small steps. So what we're going to do is recreate the quiz from the last lesson, or, or we can create a new simple quiz with different questions. It's, it's completely up to you. Um, and the idea being is this time we're going to use lists instead of piling the data into, into um, um, question inputs. So this is slightly more efficient than the last way. It's still not 100% efficient, but then we don't have all the information yet. So what the mission is here then is we're going to create, we're going to find out what lists are and just use them. Um, this will make our code more efficient, but like, once again, it's not quite there yet. Until we learn how to use for loops and while loops, it won't get completely efficient. But I want to build into that step. I don't want to bombard you with how to use loops before we kind of consolidate a lot of this, this basic information. So from this, we're going to look at how to call items in a loop in a list and then look at how to move through a list so that we can use one list for all 10 of our questions. So then the challenge will be at the end is to create a new simple 10 question quiz, um, but this time using the list example. So at the end, you should have um, a way of creating a quiz with an if statement from last lesson, and you should also have a way of creating a quiz using lists and if statements. Um, so in this one, you will see how if statements and lists kind of work together to, to make some really nice code. If it starts to go over your head at this point, don't worry too much. We will keep coming back to this. So let's begin. So the first thing I've done here is I've created a new Python document. I've called it challenge simple quiz using lists. So once you have that, let's open up our, our actual Python file. So what we would normally do then is create all of our variables, but this time our variable is going to be our list. So let's just populate a list. So I've got, Q and A. Now, the good thing about lists, so straight away you can see it's a variable, but we're not. We're going to use a data type. So the data type we're going to use is this list. So in order to call a list, you need these two square brackets. Um, and what I tend to do is kind of do it like this because you can grow a list as much as you want. You can, you know, it's very simple to kind of do it like this. So you've 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 got the bracket above and below each of the items. Now, because it's a list, you have loads of things. So it could be that you create a simple question and answer. But actual fact, if you want to take this a little bit further, you could also do like a multiple choice or a multiple options for correct answer. You could take this a lot further. But I'm just going to keep it simple for now and just say question and answer. So the first item in our list, which is zero, by the way, um, even though I'm calling it number one, is what is the capital of England okay and then that's our that's our zero item the next one is our number one item so if you look what I'm doing here is I'm actually just giving it the question and then I'm giving it the answer next to each other and these are separated by commas and this is quite clever because as you move through the list you can call up the question you can call up the answer and then you can move through to the next question, next answer and so on. So on the next line, I'm just going to call up the second question. So two, and then we're going to say, what is the capital of France? And then we're going to say Paris. Oops. And once again, if you wanted multiple, so if you wanted correct answer followed by wrong answer, you would just make this more. So you could have wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer. And you could actually iterate through that and just, and just you know, have a more complex quiz. But for this, we're just going to keep it simple. So just simple question and correct answer. And then we use the if statement to, to kind of tell us if it's right or wrong. Let's just do one more question. So let's do number three. What? is the capital of Greece. Okay. 
Um, you don't necessarily need this comma at the end, but what I tend to do is, is always put it there because as I build the list up and as I kind of add more items, if you forget it now, you'll kind of leave it off later. And it is very, very important to have these little commas between it, between each item. If you don't, then it will cause problems for you later on and it won't understand which item. So here we have item zero, then item one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Um, in this particular instance, that doesn't matter. We're not going to be calling them by the numbers. But if you did want to call each of these by their numbers, that's what you'd have to do. So let's have our points variable again, and we'll just assign that to zero. And let's have another one called current. Now what current's going to do, it's going to allow us to iterate through. So every time we add a number to current, we can call up the question. And every time we want to compare it, we can say current plus two to get the answer, um, which is really, really, really clever. So let's have an opening statement. And let's just say welcome. to my simple quiz. Okay, welcome to my simple quiz. So from here, we're gonna to wanna to create our first question. So it's very similar to what we did last time, but when last time, we'd, last time we said question, and then we said input, and then we had our string, we say what, is the capital and so on um, but we never actually gave it the answer we just knew the answer so we left it like that now this one because we don't want to give this information here we actually want to make it more dynamic so we want to call this particular item here so in the input what we're going to do is say question answer because that's our that's that's the list item. So we have to start by calling up the list item and then we want to call up an item in the list item. So as we know, to call up, a, or maybe we don't know, I don't know, but to call up a list item, we have to use these open and close brackets, just like the same ones that we're using for the list itself. But inside of this one, it's gonna be an item. So we could call it um, item zero. So if we put a zero there, it would give us this first one, which is absolutely fine. But to make it more dynamic, and because we're going to build up to, to kind of doing some more complex code, what we're going to do instead is we're going to call current. Whereas current is currently set to zero, and it will allow us to iterate through this number every time we add to it. So rather than calling zero, we're going to say current. Okay, so we've got call up the list and then call up the item that is similar to current, so or the same as current. So current is currently zero, so that's basically the same way as saying call up and then saying zero there, okay? So it's exactly the same way. Um, and we should probably test this to make sure our code is running properly. So let's just run it and press save. And let's do its thing. And then it says, what is the capital of England? At this particular moment, it won't knew, know to do anything. But we just wanted to make sure that this bit of code here um, that we've kind of calling in our input was the correct one. So just to make sure we're calling our list items properly. Let me just rearrange my windows here a bit because it's, it's getting a bit crazy. So I like to just kind of overlap my windows just so I can kind of close it very, very a bit quicker. So we now need to open up our if statement again. So if question, an actual fact for this, I'm just going to call it question one because I'm going to have a few of these in a second. So if question one is equal to, and then we're going to say Q and A. So we need those brackets again. Hey, you don't want that. We need those brackets again, so we're going to say Q and A, and then we're going to say current. But we don't want it to be equal to the current value, which is zero. We want it to be equal to whatever this one is. So all we say is plus one. So now it will say, right, if question one is equal to Q and A plus one of current, which is would turn this number into one, um, do something. So the value we want it to do is. Oh, don't forget, don't forget those. 
um, your colons, and then we want to say print. And let's just say that's correct. That's correct. So let's put in the else statement as well. So for the else, we can just say else, and then we can say, oops, we got those. Okay. So for the else, we can just say print, sorry, that was wrong. Okay. Um, so we've got our basic statement set up here, and that's pretty much everything that we wanted to do. So we've called up the question, and we said, right, ask them the question based on this current value. And then we've said, if question one is equal to that plus this value, then it's correct. If it's not, then it's wrong. And at the end, let's just, let's just go down here a bit, and let's just give it a, an ending message. So let's just say, I'm well done. Whoops. And we'll improve that later, but as I get to the end and it starts to crash out, I just need to find out where it's getting to, okay? So at this point, we just need to save it and we need to run it just to make sure that first question is doing what we want it to do. So we should get um, this print statement, we should get the question, and then when I type in London, we should get that's right. Or if I type something else, it should say that's, that's wrong, and then it should say well done and finish. So all being well, we should be okay. Let me try that one again. So I run that quiz. Save it. Here we go. So let's type in London. Sometimes it crashes like that. If, if you don't shut it properly or if you don't save it properly, sometimes it does do that, but not a problem. So that's correct. Well done. So at the moment it runs exactly. It's always a good idea to check the opposite as well, to make sure the opposite's working. So if you get it wrong, just make sure it's working. So just say Paris. You could just type whatever you want there, really, and it says that's wrong. Good. So we can now see that that first question is right. So let's generate the second question. Now, once again, this is not the most efficient way of doing it, but we do. Well, I'm just showing you, and we'll build this up next time. We'll look at uh, we'll look at um, loops so that we don't have to keep copying all this information. So this is going to be question two. So when we compare it now. We want question two. Now, the reason at this particular moment I have to change this information is because it will set it to whatever's stored in question one up here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So at the moment, it will just ask us, even though it's question two, it will still ask us the same question, okay? Because we haven't worked our way through it. Now, how we work our way through it is very, very simple. We say current equals current plus one okay so that basically means it will go on to one ah that's not right is it why is that not right quick question see if you can answer it go fantastic it's because we need to move it on to two so we need the next question so when we get to this point here after it says that's correct when we load up here we don't want this question to say london we want it to say what is the capital of france so we need to say two there and that's also the same. So if we copy that, control C, that's also the same for the else. Because if you get it wrong, you're still going to move on to the next question. If you don't put this current equals current plus two, it will still ask the old question because this hasn't been allowed to run yet. So we've done that there. And let's just add this to this bit as well because it is going to be exactly the same. And this is where loops come into it, and I'll show you this later, but this is where loops come into it. We're not continually doing this, but some of the code does get a bit more challenging. So plus two, that will allow it to move through. So all being well, just by adding this extra line of code to each of these if statements, we should now be able to move through our quiz. Let's test that. So here we go, capital of London, capital of England, London. And what's the capital of Paris? So it's moved through it. So it's stored the value in current. So by us saying plus two here, it's now stored that into current. So this value here now is two. 
and when we got to this one it now called it again onto two which is ridiculously clever um, but it helps us out no end so let's just say Paris and then that's correct as well so it all works and once again it's not a bad idea to check your wrong answers okay so let's just do question three control C control V and let's just change this to question three if, if we left it at question two what would happen is we'd get asked this question again or we wouldn't we'd get asked the correct question but the answer wouldn't be the correct answer okay so just keep that in mind um, for this particular one okay so now we should get Athens as well so let's save and run and let's just make sure all three questions work So London and let's just type this one wrong so let's just say Gur um, fantastic sorry that's wrong what's the capital of Greece and we'll say Athens um, and that was wrong also now because I typed it with a lower case so we've got to test it again um, and I will show you how to kind of make it so that it doesn't matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase but we'll leave that for another lesson because I don't want to add too much code to this otherwise it, it would just get confusing so London and then Gur and then Athens with a capital A and that's correct so you you saw that it was wrong because I hadn't quite typed the string right um, not to worry our code works and we are happy now the final thing is let's have points and the points happen exactly the same way so for a correct answer we want a certain amount of points for a wrong answer we want to deduct points so points and this is almost identical to last time remember um, make sure you spell it right make sure you remember the S and then we say 10 points for a correct answer so make sure that says points plus 10 because we need to call up the points first and then we need to assign it to itself and then add 10 to it okay so let's copy that and then on the else we want to say minus 10 let's do this one for this so there's a lot of copying and pasting um it's it's quite deliberate actually because in the next lesson i'm going to show you how to get around anything that's deliberately copied and pasted I'm going to show you ways in which you get around that so you only ever have to write it once okay but for now we're just going to write it the long way just to make it slightly more simple so that is the, our full code minus the output so it says well done and then you should say well done you have scored points and then points okay you've scored that and so we'll see how many points we get let's just run it one more time and let's just make sure that works what's going on here uh, there we go let's just run that once and make sure that works hopefully you saw that as I was writing it started playing up for some reason um, there you go so let's say run London Gur let's let's get this one right let's get the next one wrong just in case it doesn't work Paris and then Gur okay so we should have I don't know uh, plus 10 or plus 20 there you go plus 10 uh, well done you have scored 10 points so our quiz works so your next mission now is to create a simple quiz using pretty much identical code to that but I'd like your list and your quiz to be 10 questions long, okay? So I'll see you in the next lesson.